Hello, this is Ji Wen Fan. I'm going to talk about the role of aerosols in land boundary layer cloud interactions. I would like to thank the workshop organization committee for inviting me. Aerosols can impact the boundary layer and the cloud convections through three major ways. Aerosol radiation interaction, so-called ARI, this is mainly through change the uh, radiation temperature and feedback to meteorology in boundary and surface. The second is aerosol cloud interaction, ACM. This is about aerosol CD cloud droplets and uh, ice crystals. This will change cloud is feedback to radiation and change precipitation. All those also feedback to meteorology. Aerosol impact also can interact with non atmospheric interactions because uh, the aerosol changes often uh, accompanied with the uh, land surface changes. For example, at the rural, the urban rural area and land sea area. Here is the flow. I'm going to talk about uh, the physical understanding of the major impact first, and then get to the challenge problems and key data needed, then um, to the potential interdisciplinary collaborations. S start with the uh, ARI. So ARI uh, has the direct effect for scattery aerosols that cause the surface and the boundary layer, reduce sensible heat fluxes. Then for the absorbing aerosols, they can heat the low atmosphere and then create or enhance the camp inversion, stabilize atmosphere. This is also so-called semi-direct effect. The ARI effect on the cloud uh, convection really depends on the temporal and spatial scales you look at. For the shallow community, the, the heat in the PBL can decrease the cloud fraction, cloud water content. And this is a uh, so-called cloud bony effect. And the NATO in Jonathan 2005, they did the same study at the same location as Ackerman 2000 and attributed this to the reduced turbulent, turbulent moisture transport because uh, the reduced turbulence. They are also seen to uh, suppress uh, convection, reduce crop fraction and precipitation in a case study here. So the heating stabilizes the atmosphere that also reduces sensible, surface sensible and latent heat fluxes. This kind of uh, uh, results also see over the region, the polluted region, for example, in the India and the East Asia. However, they are also funded to invigorate convection above the boundary layer. And they, they, the heating at, at the top of the boundary layer increase the cap above it, but also increase the seam. So when the uh, lifting is large enough to open the seam, we will have a stronger convection. They are also found to change large scale convection, uh, large scale circulation, and then enhance convection. One of these type of studies is the elevated heat pump effect. So when we have absorbing aerosols like black carbon over this hot terrain region, this will uh, enhance the circulation and, and transport to the moisture into this uh, uh, mountain region in high convection. The ARI also can invigorate convection downwind and lead to extreme weather. This is a study um, from the 
from the Sichuan Basin over, over, also over the mountainous region. And the enhancement of the precipitation over the mountain region is mainly because the uh, suppression of the convection over the plain and allow the accumulated moisture like allergy transported by prevent by, by preventing wind to the uh, mountainous region and triggered by the agoraphic lifting. So now I see uh, impact. Those impacts are strongly depend on cloud regimes. For the shallow cumulin, some studies find that it can reduce convection liquid water content for lifetime. This is uh, uh, also observed in uh, the regions in China and also over the SGP. One of the mechanisms is the, the evaporation entrainment feedback because in the polluted con condition, we, ha we have a stronger evaporation they need to stronger uh, entrainment mixing. This will further enhance evaporation. But uh, also in the uh, uh, but in the clean and uh, humid region, ACF found it to invigorate the shallow convective class. And this is through the warm cloud invigoration, which is uh, uh, because of the enhanced uh, condensation due to um, more you know, droplets and enhanced droplets surface area, reduce the soup saturation. And this is uh, only, you know, it's very significant for the clean conditions. Now the SCI impact on deep convector class so the cold phase invigoration is uh, the mechanism was uh, uh, get a lot of intention in the past decade, which is mainly through uh, freezing uh, extra amount of uh, liquid because of suppression of the warm rain and then induce more latent heating. Well, we also see warm phase invigoration, actually stronger warm phase invigoration in deep convective clouds compared with, compared with the shell cloud. And this effect can be manifested by ultrafine aerosol particles, which draws a lot of attention recently because the ultrafine particles are high in number. Uh, they can be activated uh, in inside the cloud where supersaturation is high in deep convection. And this effect is very large. The third one is through changes the cold pore properties. While there's a low um, consistent uh, uh, results about whether aerosol enhance or weaken cold pores. But in the recent two studies for the score lines, they consistently showed that in the fluid condition, the cold pore is weakened. And this can better balance with the low level wind shear leads to more upright convection. The other one is through the feedback to environment. This has not been studied much yet. In our 2012 paper, we found that the areas induced up-level heating can induce a, uh, a large scale circulation, which is a stronger low level convergence. Recently, the, there's a study found that there's a strong feedback to the environmental humidity because of enhanced uh, drop in evaporation. Most studies dated on these aspects. Now the aerosol impact can uh, strongly interact with the land atmosphere interaction because the aerosol impact are moderated by the meteorologic conditions, humidity, uh, cloud base height, wind shear cave, this, so all of they are impacted by non-atmospheric interactions. So those 
studies, you know, ACA and land animals interactions are generally separated. So we lack studies on, you look at it more holistically. So our recent two studies showing that they interact to have a larger nonlinear application. One is the Houston case where we have the urban, urban rural and the land sea contrast. The other one is about the Kansas City urbanization, how they interact with aerosol impact, impact of the, those uh, severe hail. So all the Houston, you can see there's a large heating because the urban heat impact. And then uh, they, this actually caused the sea breeze uh, enhanced significantly. However, the strongest convection occurred in the open rule boundaries. Well, we have the largest contrast in the moisture, temperature, and aerosol, not in the largest heat place. So this stronger convection is a result from the joint effect of the aerosol on the open land to cause a very significant uh, enhancement in convection intensity and the precipitation. The, the Kansas City case, we see the similar thing. At this uh, urban rural, rural boundaries, we have uh, this uh, strong turbulence and uh, convergence. This actually uh, poured a uh, preformed storm, the, green, the Greenland, toward the city. So this actually will allow more earth impact. And then when you com compare the case without the Kansas City, the storm pass and the convection intensity is much weaker. The storm pass is changed and the convective intensity is much weaker. And this the showing that the individual effect is small. However, when the land effect and the earth effect work together, they have a large nonlinear implication on both severe and the significant severe health. Now comes to the Chinese questions and key data needed. Here I'm just to talk about uh, for each aspect and bring one most important questions, which I think not meant to be comprehensive. So for ARI, the, how do aerosols at a different vertical level and the temporarily involving aerosol properties affect PBL involution, inversion, turbulence? stability, and then clouds. So the vertical profile of aerosol properties and the temporal involving aerosol properties are very key, are very key data to get. To get. And uh, this may be, uh, you know, the reason the Tesla Blue system can help a lot on this. And then the turbulence of PBL involution requires very high resolution, high temporal resolution measurements, and, and the other measurements uh, could be very important. Also, we need the concurrent measurements of the turbulence, cloud, and the precipitation. Those are difficult to get uh, integratedly. integratedly. So, we need multiple platforms for that. I also want to emphasize the spatial heterogeneity of aerosol and the land use and cover. This is really affected the circulation and the how the aerosol on the land atmosphere impact look, uh, look like. So this requires a little work of observations. Concerning ACI, I think the most important question is that aerosol, how, what the aerosol feed into the convective objects and to what extent aerosol are co-varying with the meteorology factors. So, you know, what's happening at the surface or could be very different from the, the aerosols around the cloud bases. We really need to know what the aerosol properties is CCing or adding gets into the updrafts. Up 
But we usually don't have this measurements so when we work on the field campaign data uh, or, or long-term observations. Also, you know, circulation convection, transport both meteorology and aerosol together. So co-variability has been a major challenge to disentangle aerosol impact. And this is difficult um, for the regions with a quite variable meteorology like SGP area as shown in VOB 2018. But in the regions with a similar weather, like day-to-day, -day, like the Amazon region, the non-term observations can be extremely beneficial to disentangle Earth's impact, but we don't have observations, non-term observations in that region or other you know, regions where Earth's impact can be significant. So the concurrent measurements, convective intensity, same dynamics and cloud macrophysics are really key for us to move forward. But we lack this kind of data. Now, this is a question how, you know, interdisciplinary collaboration can work on. How and to what extent Earth's impact interact with the land atmosphere ecosystem interactions. So how aerosol uh, imp impact uh, land atmosphere interaction or how land atmosphere interaction impact uh, aerosol impact can vary with different weather systems, land surfaces and aerosol types. So you can see how much boundaries we have. This is the uh, urban, urban rural boundaries. And we need the extensive and the non-term measurements at those boundaries to gain robust understanding for each weather system and each land types, how aerosol impact would interact with land atmosphere interactions. And this really requires a collocate to the atmospheric measurements like aerosol cloud radiation with the surface fluxes measurements, transpiration and evaporation. So this is where the collaboration can really happen to work together, tackle difficult science question. So also for atmospheric science questions like aerosol impact, the major problem is that we lack of multiple measurements in multiple locations on long time scale. And look at how the, the uh, Ameriflux sets are, how many they are. So we can logistically you know, work together and put measurements on the set to get measurements at multiple locations and long term. I'll stop here. Thank you. And uh, I'll answer your questions in the online discussion session.